What's up guys? Mike here, coming at you from the mushroom farm. Great video for you guys today. So, going out of the incubation room, getting into the grow room. Let's look at this. Let's see what I got in here right now. Can we see through the fog? Oh yeah, look at those monsters. Look at those monsters through the fog. So we got some massive blues in here, like always. Lion's manes, coral tooth, all sorts of hericiums up here. They're still growing. They're little babies right now. But I want to say these aren't just your typical lion's mane or your typical coral tooth mushrooms, guys. There's something a little bit special about those. It's because this is my breeding project. So there's lots of F1 generations coming out here. So these are the first generations of brand new strains. So I'm basically going to pick out some of my favorite lion's mane, some of my favorite coral tooth, my heresium coralloides, and we're going to clone them and we're going to put them into cultivation here. We're going to see which ones we like the best, and then we're going to release some new genetics on the channel. So some of you guys know I sell some really good mushroom genetics. I have lots of you guys pick them up. This one, for instance, the King Blue. Look at those things. Absolutely massive oyster mushrooms. So if you guys want to get some really nice, look at those top fruits down here. We got all sorts of stuff going on. Cowboy hat is hitting the mushrooms. Mushrooms are so big. Look at that. Mushrooms are so big. I got to watch out that I don't hit them with my freaking hat in here. What do we got over here? Grissium coralloides. We'll get some better close-ups of these when the fog dies down. We're going to let the humidifiers do their thing. But I'll just say if any of you guys want to pick up any really nice mushroom genetics, go ahead and look down in the description box below. You can find my website. Go over there, and then you can get your own commercial liquid cultures there. And that way you guys can grow some banging mushrooms like I got in here. So basically what this video is going to be about today is just stuff I do here kind of on a regular basis, little checks I make in the grow room just to make sure I got everything on track. And I'm also going to talk about like the incubation area, so the staging area out there for the blocks too. And we're going to go over all that today just to make sure you kind of stay on track on your farm, make sure you're not having any problems. There's just like little things I check on a daily basis. This is one of those jobs you don't really get a day off. You pretty much always got to kind of be on point one way or another. Look at those mushrooms. Look at those beautiful mushrooms. So anyway, I want to tell you guys too, I've been doing this whole mushroom farming thing almost a decade right now. Very experienced with this. That's mainly what this channel is about. Mushrooms, farming, just awesome stuff. So if you're into mushrooms or farming and you haven't already subscribed, make sure you click that subscribe button right now so you get more mushroom and farming videos like this in the future. But anyway, let's go ahead. Let's talk about what I'm doing in these grow rooms on a regular basis. Pretty much one of the main things I do right away when I walk in, just because I've been doing it for a long time, I have an eye for all this stuff. So if there's like a major malfunction, whether it's humidity, um, airflow, anything like that, like a, some kind of contamination problem, I can pretty much spot that right away. And I'll kind of like walk over to that. I'll, my eye will pick it up right away. I will know something is wrong. I will assess the problem. And then I pretty much try to come up with a solution immediately. That's one thing when you are a farmer, when you become a farmer, you become like the best problem solver in the world. And honestly, I kind of always have liked critical thinking and doing fun little difficult projects in a way. So this stuff suits me really well. I'll say another thing I check, like I said, I always look for problems. I'm always looking for maturity as well. You want to make sure you're picking things on the right time and you're just meeting your overall demand of your market. Some of these mushrooms, this one, I've actually let it kind of stay on the block a little bit longer than what I normally would. And it's definitely ready to pick, but I'm waiting just a little bit just so we can time it as best as we can for the farmer's market. I have a farmer's market coming up next week, Tuesday, okay? So these heresiums, most of these heresiums are going to be absolutely timed perfect for those because that's going to give them ample time to grow. So basically right now, because I know I have the market coming up next Tuesday, and then the following week I have one Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday, okay? So I'm making sure I just have everything staged in here and timed properly. So I take all those things to account. So I'm watching just overall maturity, and then I try to think, okay, which mushrooms are we going to use for which market? And we're going to do that based on maturity, because I always give my customers the freshest mushrooms possible, okay? That's key. I've totally seen lots of guys just selling subpar mushrooms. I don't understand how anyone can do it. I don't even want to put a subpar mushroom on YouTube, on Instagram, on anything like that. I do want to say, if you guys are not following me on Instagram, go over there and follow me on Instagram. I'm trying to get some Instagram followers. I've just never really been an Instagrammer, but I really need to try to get that up. It'd be kind of cool if we could got some more followers over there on the Instagram. I'm trying to post a little more frequently over there. But like I said, I'm mainly coming here, checking out to make sure that everything's on time. That's pretty much number one. And another thing that I'm doing, the humidifier. Let's come look at my humidifier. 
it's really nice and clean right now. I cleaned it just a few days ago. You need to clean these things about like, and no one make fun of my dirty shirt, okay? I'm doing farm work. But I clean my humidifiers pretty much once a week. You can go a little bit longer. See, now check it out. I don't have a float valve. Oh boy, we turn it on. Now I'm gonna tell you guys, I don't have a float valve in that thing, okay? So I have to fill it up pretty much on a daily basis, a couple times a day, a lot of times. And it doesn't bother me because I come in here and I check on this stuff on a regular basis. It really keeps me on point to tell you the truth because if you don't do it, especially in a place like Colorado where we have some dry air, your mushrooms could dry out and you're gonna have problems. It could happen in just like a day. All of a sudden you'll see problems immediately. So it definitely helps me just to come out in here, fill it up on a regular basis, take a look at things. A lot of times too, on most mushroom farms, a lot of guys are picking twice a day. So they do pickings in the morning, pickings in the evening, just because these things grow so fast, you gotta get them pretty much twice a day. Otherwise you're not really picking them at the optimal times. There's like a really fine window on when you can pick your mushrooms. And if you can time it just perfect, then it extends the shelf life and everything. You can pretty much maximize your shelf life and your yield all in one shot if you can time your picking perfectly, okay? So that's why picking your mushrooms at a perfect time is important, and that's why I'm always kind of checking stuff. It's fun for me too, man. After you go through all this work growing these mushrooms, you come in here, you see the fruits of your labor, uh, literally. So I enjoy it so much, especially like things like this, like my new pheno hunt going on. Like I said, I'm actually developing new genetics new strains here so that's cool for me we're gonna see if we can get some really nice aggressive mushrooms but that's pretty much most of what I check on in the grow room I also will take out like old blocks from time to time but I'll kind of talk to you guys about that more in like a cleaning video so let's go out here into the incubation area kind of like where we stage the mushroom blocks and we'll talk about this and kind of like what I look for in the incubation area so right over here in the incubation area I've got blocks of all different ages okay and I've talked a little bit about this previously but every week i'm pretty much doing production of some kind to make these blocks whether i'm making oyster mushrooms hericiums lion's mane since i'm like a pretty much a farmer's market seller and one of my buddies he was like telling me i was like a craft grower i'm kind of like a craft grower really i do kind of grow like all sorts of different varieties and things like that but yeah i do a lot of specialized varieties so i've got a lot of different varieties i'll inoculate on a weekly basis blue oyster pink oyster gold oyster aspen oyster black pearl king king trumpet uh, coral tooth mushroom, the Hericeum coralloides, the bear's head, the Hericeum americanum, Hericeum arenaceus, the lion's mane. So I'm inoculating all these on a regular basis. It can be a lot sometimes, and I will say that it is a little excessive. There's a point when you shouldn't grow like so many different strains, but there's a lot of guys too that really enjoy doing it. I enjoy doing it, and that's why I grow so many of these different kinds. I know one dude back in Illinois, he's posted, he made a post on Facebook the other day. He's got a really cool farm. It's called a uh, Flyway Farm uh, from Southern Illinois. He's a good guy. His name's Mike. His name's Mike also. So, but he was talking about growing 15 varieties I saw him make a post and I was like oh my god like I mean that's a lot to handle you guys I think it's like he was saying he was wanting to do it like to set the standard I think that's super cool anyway because like that guy's got to do that and honestly that's why that's why I try to do really awesome grows I feel like it's good to set a standard you know because you know someone's got to set the standard guys someone's always got to raise the bar so it always makes us you know perform a little better so I think it's freaking awesome so like I said there's a significant amount of varieties in here there's a lot of things to check on on a regular basis with all these different varieties there's nuance to these different varieties too so you need to check them out individually and there's things that you need to know to kind of look for for each individual species or whatever strain you're growing I'll say a lot of things like I've kind of talked about this previously the oyster mushrooms make sure they're just colonizing well you know my hericiums I'm always just seeing how thick the mycelium is getting on them these ones right here I kind of showed some lion's mane bags the other day these ones are almost ready to put into the grow room like I put some in here today let me show you guys the ones I put in here today. So the ones I actually put in here today, check these out. So let's talk about these things a little bit. So you can see how dense that mycelium is there. Like I said, you can see the white coming through. Hericeum is always like a little faint. I've talked about that before. But once you start to see, see all that pinning and stuff going on in there, that's how you know this thing is ready. Now that is the Hericeum Americanum right there. But when you see about the mycelium density looking about like that, that is my favorite time to put that in there. Now look at this one. So this one right here, the Yeti, the Lion's Mane, Hericeum arenaceus. That's that block right there. You can see the slight difference in look between those two. So on the left, Hericeum americanum. On the right, Hericeum arenaceus. Over here, that is the Black Pearl King coming in. Shimo Fury Hirataki. So it'll be just about one week and we will have some nice Black Pearl Kings coming out. 
doing a little side fruit right there. A lot of times I top fruit them. We'll talk about this a little bit. I'm going to experiment with this mushroom hardcore this year. And I like growing it different ways. I've done side fruits. I've done top fruits. But we're going to play with it a little bit. I might actually start doing top fruits kind of like I'm doing over here but maybe on the side we'll see how they go but we're gonna try all sorts of different little experiments with the black pearl king this year need to pick that one man I don't like him to get him that mature and like that one right there I'll tell you I was, I was talking to you guys about making sure I was timing them perfectly for the farmer's market I might end up eating on that one man that might be a good one for me to eat on these next couple days and I'll pick these ones probably pick that one tomorrow this one I should probably this one right here I should probably pick tonight but I could let those go a little longer. We're going to let these back here go a little bit longer. This is actually, that block right there, is actually a 10-pound block. So uh, this is going to grow one massive mushroom from the looks of it. We'll see how that one grows. Is it, That's like the Fibonacci sequence or the little spiral. Look at that. That's kind of what that's like, right? I think that's the name for that. Tell me in the comments below. Is it Fibonacci? Look at those blues. Look at the blues. They make like this little rosette shape. They make like a little rosette shape when you do top fruits. When you do top fruits with oyster mushrooms, they make this like nice, cool little rosette. Now, right here with this blue, this one that's really mature, I want to show you guys a few things. I am such a perfectionist, I like to show off my imperfections. So these right here, see those like kind of like discolored spots right there? Now, some people could mistake that and they might think it's a bacterial problem. I will tell you that is not anything like that. That is actually just from the mushroom getting a little dry. So, got a little dry right there. Just so you guys know, that's actually still what those pieces would still be 100% edible. You don't want to sell anything like that, honestly, like at the farmer's market. Anywhere, like right there, that's a little dried out. I got a couple down here. There's like... See those like couple on the bottom of that cluster down there? You gotta watch for that kind of stuff though because even though that kind of stuff is fine, you know, and it wouldn't cause you any problems, it's not really appealing to the eye and that's important when you're selling stuff like at a farmer's market. And it's important to me too, just personally, because I always like to grow the best mushrooms possible. The cream of the crop! Back to the incubation area, guys. I got a few more things I wanna talk to you guys about. Now, when you're growing so many different varieties, there's a lot of things to keep track of, obviously. A lot of things you have to know what species, what the species will actually do in the incubation period. Some of them look different. Some of them have di different time frames. So I'm just going to talk to you guys a little bit about what I do. So I check all these things about each individual species. I make sure everything's basically on track. One thing I look for on a bag I've kind of inoculated recently, and these were fairly recent. These were about a week ago. They're starting to get pretty thick though. So this is my Herisium coralloides CT. It's my coral tooth, but. Basically, I'm just watching to make sure that my ceiling is staying strong and it's really blasting off solid. Here's one I did, a pink oyster. I did this one on 430, okay? So a little more recent, but you can see I'm just making sure that my ceiling is still blasting off well. I'm making sure we don't have any like hard lines where we see kind of like my ceiling almost stopping entirely or like building up a really thick wall of my ceiling and almost not colonizing the rest of the block. If you see that, you might have contamination problems. But I just want to say, you want to check these things over. Mainly you're looking for contamination. You're also looking to make sure that like your spawn is on track. You're just making sure everything is growing in properly. So then that way that we can get them in the grow room at a proper time. Now, sometimes if you can tell your spawn isn't jumping off as quickly, you can hurry up and make another batch fast actually. So if you have spawn in refrigeration let's just say we had a batch of like blue oyster or lion's mane and we can look at it and we could tell an in incubation that we just made these bags a few days ago and we could tell that maybe it's contaminated or it's not jumping off as it should and something's messed up if you have spare spawn in your fridge and i have a walk-in cooler over here so so basically if you have spawn set up in your walk-in cooler and you notice you have a problem you could potentially actually make a whole nother batch of blocks spawn new blocks and you can kind of get back up to speed a little bit but you're still going to lose a few days so you got to be careful but this is one of those reasons why i always try to like stay on track i actually try to stay like just a little bit ahead if i can really try not to fall behind on this kind of stuff because if you do sometimes it's hard to make up speed especially if you run into a problem so keep all that stuff in mind but those are some of the checks i do on a regular basis basically always just like i said i'm making sure everything is on track in incubation making sure everything's growing properly and then in the grow room, I'm always looking for like levels of maturity, just making sure we're on track for the upcoming markets, making sure I'm not picking things, like I said, too over mature. We're trying to find that perfect balance of proper maturity, 
yield, and then shelf life. So all those things are going to play a role, and that's why the picking window, like I said, is so important. But if you guys got any questions on this video, let me know. Just kind of put it down below in that comment section. I really like answering all your questions. I've got some videos. I think I'm going to do a video maybe on, like, I thought about doing one on sawdust spawn today, like sawdust spawn versus grain spawn. Maybe I'll do that tomorrow. And I've been trying to keep up with these daily videos, so I'm going to try to keep them coming for you guys because I really enjoy making them to tell the truth. It's always just like finding the time to do it and then editing it too because I'll tell you guys, I really enjoy editing these videos. Sometimes you guys can tell like I have some fun doing it. I take some time doing it. And I will say a lot of times when I do it, like I always think like, hey, how could I have done a little bit better? You know what I mean? So like, I don't know, I'm putting them out on a daily basis just so we can get videos out on a daily basis. But if I'm a little slow sometimes, maybe it's because like I said, I'm either editing something or I'm like doing work here on the farm. So bear with me, but I'm trying to get these daily videos out. But hopefully you guys all found this video helpful and informative. If you did, please drop this video a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. But that's all I got for you on this one. And I will catch you guys on the next one.